Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Okay, why? When deciding between calls and put, it's not just the delta of the matter. If a trader sells an option and the IV increases, okay, even if the underlying falls, Vega may overpower any gain in delta. Likewise, a put may have unexpected positive returns. Okay? So here's another example of EUU. All yeah, right. I I'll work on it, Mark. Sorry. All right. On 11.5, a trader thinks the U.S. dollar is going to increase again against the euro. That needs to say against the euro. Okay? Based on the IV chart, should the trader buy an EUU put or sell an EUU call? Okay? What do you guys think? Should the trader buy an EUU put or sell an EUU call based solely on the volatility? What do you traders think? I see one for buy. Anybody else? If you want to learn how to speculate better with options, this is your chance. This is a great way to, to get this knowledge, okay? I'm not even, I'm not going to, you don't lose any money trading with me, okay? All right, we got another B from Larry King. I apologize, on, I'm glad, I, congratulations on your recent retirement, by the way. All right, we see a buy put. All right, so the answer is probably buying a put makes the most sense. And, again, the reason being is that, you know, this volatility, you know, I actually showed you what was happening here. This volatility increases. The trader should have bought a put. Okay? Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Okay. All right. I mean, you can clearly see what happens here. All right. This put, you're buying this cheap ball, you get this big spike in volatility. Let me uh, erase that out. You get this big spike in volatility, plus you get a big drop in the price. You make an absolute, by the time you get here, the put purchase just did so well. All right, th this would have been just a spectacular purchase. Okay, relative to selling the call. Selling the call wins. It clearly wins. But not in the same way that buying the put wins. All right, you took advantage of buying that cheap volatility. Okay. Now, here's another one. If I was bullish on 11.1, okay, what trade would make the most sense? If I'm bullish, if I think the YUK, if I think that uh, the YUK is going to go up, which means the dollar is going to increase against the yen, then what would I, uh, what would I want to do on 11.1, which is right around here? What do you guys think? Would I want to buy a call or would I want to sell a put? I 
Fantasy One for sell put. See a couple. All right, good. Yeah, I would I would tend to agree with that. I think selling a put makes the most sense. Let's take a look at our chart. Okay. You know, we sell our put, and that vol really does drop for us. Okay? And now you don't get that massive increase that you would see in um, – that we see in the euro. And, in fact, you, it just kind of sits there for a little while. Okay? But even though – all right? Even though we kind of sit here for a nice period of time, you can see – Matching these up, we don't do much. One week later, let me uh, erase a couple things. One week later, which is not here, but actually here, based on trading days, you're up 50 cents, even though the stock is basically the uh, not the stock, the um, currency ratio is basically unchanged. YUK hasn't really moved, and those 80.5 puts have made 50 cents in a week. That was that volatility coming out. All right, those Jan puts, all right, it's a real advantage. Okay? All right. That was a quick and easy one. Hey, uh, Mark. Yeah. What, what if someone, someone says, says, oh, they want to trade the currency options, options but they realize it's always important, important, but they don't really want to have that big of a forecast. Is there a strategy? I know that's a whole, whole other uh, mm -hmm. hour or so, but could you go through what someone could do if they said, okay, I, I think that uh, the dollar was going to move up or down, but they were not so certain about volatility? Yeah, you know, that, that, so they think it's going to go, they, now, so you think volatility is in middling range or? Exactly. They, 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 they want to have, have a price, price forecast, forecast, and they don't, and they don't really, really want to have a volatility, volatility forecast. forecast. How, How can you trade these options, options rather than just, than just selling an option, option or buying an option? option. I know it's right. Really you know, there's some really, that's a great, that's a great question. You know, there's a lot of good ways to, to, man, to monitor that stuff. One thing that you can do is, you can set up vertical spreads, broken wing butterflies that will really dampen volatility. Um, you can set up a grouping of time spreads that will uh, dampen volatility. You can get your essentially what I would call weighted vega uh, mm -hmm. down. That's a much more advanced topic. Um, but if you don't have a volatility opinion, the way I like to do things is I'm a big proponent of using vertical spreads and using, uh, using those to your advantage. You can use one-point verticals. Heck, you can actually do bullish or bearish butterflies. Okay? Yeah. One advantage of understanding volatility is understanding how volatility moves with the option. Okay? If we look at our chart here, what do you guys notice? As far as what do you guys notice? It, when what happens to volatility in YUK, at least over this time period, this is a three-month time period, we don't want to make any huge generalizations, but generally what do you see? When we're kind of rallying in YUK, which means the dollar is picking up value, what's happening to volatility? It's falling. When the dollar is losing value, to YUK, or to the yen, what's generally happening? Volatility is, um, well, you can see it kind of starts to increase here. You know, we, I think we're right here. Okay? So if you are bearish, okay, it can make sense to have, to set up your trade so that you have kind of a little bit of, you get a little help from volatility um, if you're right, but you're kind of protected if you're wrong, things like uh, risk reversals can make a lot of uh, can make certain types of sense. Uh, so can uh, you know vertical spreads? They make a lot of sense. Now, if you get into vertical spreads, 
you can really get into, and here, you know what, I'm going to pull up Live All. I'm going to share my desktop real quick. You guys are all going to get a cute look, uh, a look at what my son looks like. Great. Great. Can't wait. Oh. Yeah, he's a, he's a good-looking kid. Uh, obviously, he takes after his, uh, exactly. his mother, who is uh, unbelievably good-looking and within earshot. <laughs> um, so, you know, one thing that you could really use to your advantage here, Mark 2.0. <laughs> yeah, no, I like to joke that my wife and I named him after the person we both love most. Um, yeah, so let's look at something like EUU, okay, which has some real cool movements. Okay, if we look at a skew chart, okay, this is a powerful tool that is available on LiveVol. And, you know, we'll just run it three months back. So what's, what's that, that telling us, Mark? I will see show that. you here. Let me run this real quick. I, uh... All right, perfect. Um, what this is showing us, is how the volatility, remember I showed you that volatility surface right here, okay? If we look at this volatility surface while that's running, okay, you can see all the different bumps and how the surface isn't perfectly flat. Every strike is a little di has a little different volatility. And you can use that to your advantage to set up trades, okay? Mm -hmm. So, for instance, let's go back to our volatility chart that we looked at. And, I, you know, I, I really do like these charts a lot. They're great. You know, here's the UU. Let me pull it apart. I want to minimize this. All right, let me get rid of the 360 marker. Oops. And, you know, here is 60-day vol over the last, let's go over the last three months again, like, like we were looking at, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, let's take a look at what's going on here. You've got really, you know, right, uh, right here we've got really, you know, nice high vol, okay? That, that was the peak, peak of, of the, the crisis, crisis correct? correct? That or was the peak much. of the crisis. So, and I believe that was, oh, what was that? I think that was leading in. This was November 30th. Oh, that was a great day to sell any kind of, that was a great day to sell vol in general, if you ask me. I mean, you could tell that they were going to get a deal done. So here you go, and we're going to pull up within 10% of at the money. We'll just pull up, I'll get rid of September. Let's just pull up the Jan. And you can actually see the shifts in the volatility. Okay? So watch what ha what's happening leading into this. So you're sitting here, we're at 136. And you're saying to yourself, you know what, I think, uh, I, I, you know, I think we've got to be going lower. But I'm a little afraid of what's going to be ha of the fact that we're going to go higher. All right. So what is Vol doing on the 22nd? We're at the, and at the same and 60-day Vol is on its absolute low end. Okay. I mean, take a look. This is the cheapest that it had been, and you know, just about the cheapest it had been in over the last three months. And even if you look at a year, let me go down to that, that, uh, that 22nd, you know, we're at the high point, you know, we're relatively high for the year, but um, over the, the last six months or so, we're at the very low point. There you are, 22nd. Yeah. So... You say to yourself, okay, I want to purchase something. You buy, but 
you know, if you're afraid of volatility increasing, what you can do is you can kind of set up something like a ratio spread where you sell at the money and buy two puts that are out of the money. Or mm -hmm. you can, and you can see, what if we'd sold the 136s at 280 and bought two of the one, oh, oh, we want the puts. So we sell two of those at 280, and then we buy two of the 134s. Oh, well, let me find the 130. Oh, we can even do the 133. Let's go crazy. We'll do the 133s. At uh, 165, so you pay 50 cents for the ratio spread. How's that ratio spread looking now? Well, let's do some math here. Vol is way up, okay? Our 136s that we sold, as we've moved away from those, their vol's probably held in a little better than, uh, their vol's probably not increased as much as our, as our upside. So the put we're trading, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a synthetic for you folks here. The call is trading about $0.80. Cents. We're trading $6.17 in the money. So the put's at $7. Okay? Give or take a little interest there. Mm -hmm. How's that for a synthetic? Perfect. Yeah. Now you've got your 133s. The calls are trading 160 Okay? They are three dollars and seventeen cents in the money. One sixty plus three seventeen is four seventy seven. Four seventy seven times two is nine dollars and sixty four cents. So we made that ratio spread went from fifty cents to two dollars and sixty four cents. You made two bucks because you bet that if you were right on your direction, that volatility would also go with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Boy, I still got it. I have not done that type of stuff in years. That's not true. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, you know, th that's really what you can do. It it's not even – so there we took kind of a, a relatively vega neutral approach to, to the trade, but we were betting that vol would go in our favor if we were right. Okay. Now, if you want me to lay out that ratio spread, I'm happy to. Uh, I, I didn't. I sh in the future, I'll write up r currency ratio spreads. Actually, that might be a really interesting way to play, based on especially in something like EEU. Actually, looking back at this thing, um, you know, ratio spreads might be a real interesting way to play this. You know, buy buy one, sell two if you think it's going up, and sell one and buy two if you think it's going down. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting, interesting way to look at volatility. volatility, absolutely. You know, think about here. If you buy one and sell two, if you bought the on the 30th, if you were, if you were, betting, on vol if you were betting on a rally here, what if you put on the 132, 134, call one by two? Let's take a look here. Mm -hmm. Here's the 30th. Okay. So you buy the 132 for $2. You sell the 134 at, we'll call that a buck 30. So that's, uh, you collect 60 cents on the trade. How does this thing do when we rally? All right, well, uh, let's see. Where do you want to go to? Let's look on our chart. I can even stop the high. I bet you the, the high will even be a winner. Let's see, where, that's right here, correct, 12.3? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, so on 12.3, we have a nice little dip in vol. Uh, our 132 calls, let's see here. Our 132 calls, let's see, the puts are a buck 70, we'll call that a buck 75. They're two bucks, 2.15 in the money. So what is that? Uh, oh man, was that 390? I think so. All right, 390. The 133s are. Let's see. The 
those are let's see they're 15 cents of the money those are 265 so that's 265 times two well actually that one ends up actually being a loser i think the price action does get you too much there at least in the short term although i think it ends up winning if you hold on to the seventh it certainly wins um but uh but yeah, you know, even so, 265 times two is 530 minus 390. What is that? That's a buck 40. Right. right. Um, and what did we sell it at initially? I forgot already. Um, and I, I, we, it was a little bit of a loser, but not in the same regards as the way our one by two was a huge winner going the other way. Right. So right. the idea was we we used volatility to our advantage and. Now the, and at 132, it is definitely a winner here. Okay, like if we get to the eighth. Here I'm gonna. If you get to the you know any period of time where we're trading around 132 ish, that trade is a, a big winner. So. Uh, you know that's kind of kind of. Uh, you know it's real interesting the way you can use volatility to your advantage. Most, Most importantly, importantly understand, understand that it's so important, important that's and that's really, really mm -hmm. the, essence the essence of your, of your presentation. presentation. Yeah. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.